Hello, hello, hello! Kali Linux Basics for Beginners. So, in this video I'm going to go over the basics of Kali Linux. I am going to assume that you are completely fresh to Kali Linux and you have not used Linux before. So, we're going to be covering a number of basics which you'll need to use Kali and other Linux-based operating systems. Now, I'm also assuming you've already got Kali Linux installed. If you haven't got it installed, I'm going to put a link to uh, the installation video of Kali Linux up in the top corner. So you can click on that and watch that video on how to install that on your PC. Now, Kali Linux. What is Kali Linux? Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux which is designed for cybersecurity professionals and ethical hackers. Essentially, it's like a hacker's toolkit. So um, it's Linux with a number of tools pre-installed and it's ready to go and do cybersecurity assessments. Now, I will be going over a number of uh, basics of how to work with Kali Linux. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to know about Linux and Kali is that you need to know how to use the terminal. Now, the terminal, you will have probably seen something like it in many movies. So the terminal, is just over here, this icon here. It says here, Terminal Emulator. We're going to click on that. And this is the terminal. I'm just going to zoom this in so you can see this a bit better. You can use Control Plus to do this. There we go. Nice and big for you. OK. So this is the terminal or the command line. So um, unlike Windows, a lot of things you'll need to do with Kali Linux will involve using the command line because this is how Linux was designed from the ground up. It's, uh, it's a lot easier to do things sometimes, especially highly technical things, using a command line terminal as opposed to uh, a graphical user interface like Windows or the usual uh, like uh, Windows and things that you get. So this is a graphical user interface here. This is a command line interface here. So starting first, what are we looking at here? So um, what this says here is Kali at Kali. So this is our username, and this is our host name, or the machine's name. Now this is a little bit confusing because both our username and our host name are Kali. But we're going to learn our first commands to figure this out. So um, the first command we will use is who am I? This will give us our username. So all I did was type in who am I and then press enter on my keyboard and then the command returns a response. So the response was Kali. That is our username. And now our host name or our machine name, we'll want to get that as well just to double check. So host name is the command for that. Press enter and Kali and that's good. We now know two commands for figuring this out if we don't have this little uh, line here in the terminal. It's just good practice to know little things like this. Now, we've filled up some of the terminal, so let's uh, clear this up with the very aptly named clear command. So that's cleared up our terminal window, and we've got room to work with other commands. Now, an important thing to learn with Linux and Linux other Linux-based operating systems is uh, the concept of sudo. So um, if you've ever been using computers for a long time, you may have heard of administrator users or admin users. And essentially, you have two types of user account. You have standard users, and you have super users or admin users, which um, have um, elevated privileges over a normal user. So in general, this will be your user that's using a machine, maybe at your school or workplace, just the general person working there. And then you'll have an admin user who is able to manage user accounts, change passwords and that things, and uh, that, those sort of things. And uh, to, in order to do that, those admin users will need to have elevated privileges to go and use programs to change usernames, change passwords, reset passwords, etc. In Linux, our admin user is called sudo or the super user, and uh, sudo is actually a command which stands for super user do. Now you'll see this in many commands and many tutorials, but we need to learn this from the get-go so that we can do certain high-level things with our terminal. So um, let's uh, demo this. 
So um, I am going to do who am I again. So I am Callie. However, if I put sudo and then who am I, this is going to try and run this command as the super user or the, uh, the admin account of the Kali Linux. So um, what it's asking for now is the password. So I am going to put my password in. And I mistyped it. <laughs> Try that again. There we go. Did that right this time. So you see the second time when I put my password in correct, it returned root. So root is the name of um, the super user account. But we use sudo, the sudo command, to um, use the privileges of that super user account in order to do things such as change passwords, uh, change system settings and such. Next we're going to type clear and press enter. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do first with our, uh, our su newly learned sudo command is we are going to update Kali. So it's a very standard thing to do to update um, Kali and Linux uh, through the terminal as opposed to the, uh, the graphical user interface or GUI. It's just a little bit easier. So first thing you need to do is type in sudo and then we'll not use that command. We will use um, apt update. Now what this is doing is this is updating essentially the list of software in the repositories. So um, this is um, updating all the lists of the latest like packages and things. It's not actually upgrading any actual software yet. So that's done updating our list of software. Next we do a similar command, so sudo apt, and instead we want upgrade. Now this will ask you if you want to do this. So you can see here it's listing a number of um, bits of software and packages which it wants to uh, upgrade. And then it's asking, do you want to continue Y slash N? And that stands for yes slash no. So we want to type Y and then press enter. Now this is going to go ahead and it's going to uh, start updating. At this point, I'm going to make this a bit smaller so you can kind of see what's going on a little bit, little bit better. And this is also kind of fun because it looks a lot more impressive than it is. Because uh, you're using the terminal, it kind of looks like something from a Hollywood movie when you see the scrolling text go past. But all this is doing is just performing a software update. Now, through the magic of video editing, I am going to skip to one and it's done. And then we will resume. Okay, so that is finished updating our Kali Linux system. And yeah, this is a, a very common command that you'll be using. Uh, a lot of the time Kali will be deployed uh, for assessments and things. So say you're doing an assessment for a company and uh, they have their own internal network infrastructure. Kali will often be installed as a virtual machine somewhere on the network and will uh, come just uh, vanilla out the box and it won't be completely updated. So this will be one of the first commands that you'll need to run. So this is a command that you will be using quite a lot. So uh, now we'll clear up the uh, terminal. So clear command and then enter again. And then I am going to zoom in the terminal again so it's a little bit easier for you to, to read. Okay, there we go. Okay, up next we're going to go through how to navigate the file system in Kali Linux with the terminal. So this will be very useful for you, especially if you are getting into cybersecurity and ethical hacking, because you won't always have a graphical user interface available to you. So you won't always have this nice, easy to use file system where you can double click and, and run through um, different folders. So. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to go through next. So first command that we are going to go through is uh, pwd, or print working directory. So this will tell you where you are in the file system. So if you think of the terminal as being like a file browser, so it's always working out of a certain folder. So right now it's working out of the home folder of the, uh, the Kali user. So um, there's downloads, documents, music, pictures, 
public templates and videos. And that's the default place that the terminal will start unless you tell it otherwise. So this squiggle here, or tiled, that tells us that we're in the home directory. And uh, this will change as we navigate around the file system. So we will press print working directory, enter. And you see we are in slash home slash Cali. So a little bit about this. So um, the lowest point of Linux's file system is this slash here or the root. Now there's another folder which is indeed called root. If you remember back to our sudo and our root user, there is another folder for that user. So do not confuse the two. You have the root of the file system and you have the root users directory. Now to actually demonstrate this and show you that directory, I am going to use another command called ls. So this will list what's in our current file system. So this is just like bringing up a window that you can see here. So this is our usual file browser, and you can see we've got desktop documents downloads, desktop documents downloads. So you can see they're doing the same thing. So right now, that root folder that I mentioned, which is confused with this one, is not here. So where is that? So let's go to the root directory of our file system and have a little look around. So to do that, we'll need another command to change around the, the file system and go somewhere else. So we will use cd, or change directory. Now, there are two types of arguments you can give it. One is called a relative file path. So if I wanted to go into documents, I would simply type documents. Now, if I want to save time as well, you can use autocomplete. Now, how this works is you start typing and you press the tab key. And if there is something that matches it, it will fill it in for you. And this will save you a lot of time. So now that that is um, typed in, we'll press enter. And you can see now we are in our home directory forward slash documents. So this is just like the forward slash on an internet browser for websites. So you go into different uh, directories and different pages which are forward slash something. So it, it, it's fa fairly similar. So we can press ls again, and enter, and there's nothing in our documents folder. But this is no good. We want to try and find that root folder which I mentioned. So what we'll need to do is give this a full file path. So you'll need to type the full path to that folder. So this up here is a full file path, or an absolute file path. And uh, this here is the relative one that we gave it. It simply is trying to change into what is in directly in front of it, essentially. So we are going to change directory to the root of our file system. And there we go. We are now at the root of our file system. I'm going to put in clear. And that's just going to clear the terminal up so you can see a little bit easier. So once again, I'm going to give it the ls command. So as you can see here, we have a number of folders and files listed. So this is the root of our file system. If you use any other type of Linux, this will be more or less identical. They're all based on the same Linux, essentially. So you can see here a folder called root. And that is the, um, the user folder of the root user account, which I mentioned. So yeah, you just need to make sure not to, mention, uh, not to um, mix up the root of the file system with the root users <laughs> folder. I know, I know it's a little confusing, just, it's just something you need to know, just a little quirk of Linux. So to um, add on top of ls, like sometimes this may not be the nicest way of uh, looking at files. So I'm gonna give ls a uh, flag to tell it to do something different. So I've put in a space, then I'm gonna type dash, and then l, and then enter. And this will give us a lot more information, and it will give us a long list of um, the files that were there. So um, you can see here a number of advanced things which uh, you will need to go through as you develop your ethical hacking and cybersecurity skill set. So um, on the far left over here, we have file permissions. So uh, to not go into too many details, we've got the uh, D is a directory or folder. Then we've got read, write, execute, read, write, execute read, write, execute, but some of them are dashed and some of them have the, uh, the letters in place. Essentially what this is, it's just um, the user permissions and how Linux does it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense, but yeah, more on that in a later video. But yeah, if you want to list uh, more detailed things about the files in a certain area, you just give ls that l command. Now to clear this up, clear, enter. 
Okay, the final command I'm going to go through in this uh, beginner's video is ifconfig. So ifconfig stands for interface configuration. So what this does is it tells us um, the um, configuration of the different network devices on this machine. So if I press enter, you can see that we have a couple of things here. You know what, I am going to zoom this out again so this looks a little bit easier to see. So there we go. So um, if you remember back to how we installed this, there were a number of interfaces that we could configure with our virtual machines, but we only set up one. And uh, this is the one that we set up for our virtual machine. So we currently have an IP address of 10.0.2.15. And this will be very important with setting up uh, Kali Linux boxes on certain networks and things and, and firing off exploits and uh, just in general, um, running um, any kind of ethical hacking exercise. Now, the second interface, the LO interface, is what's called the loopback interface. So uh, what this is used for is uh, a lot of software, they will host um, certain services on a host and host it to them themselves, like a web server, for example. And... Um, they will use that for convenience sake, so it can essentially address itself as, as if it was hosting things to other machines across the internet and such. So yeah, that is just for specific applications and things, so it can send uh, data back to itself and things. Uh, don't worry about it for now, you, you will come across it later. So uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Like This has just been a quick uh, walkthrough of a number of commands which you will use with not just Kali Linux, but any other Linux-based uh, operating system, especially in cybersecurity and uh, any ethical hacking things. So it's good to hit the ground running with these terminal commands and get used to it. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope this has been useful to you. Take care.